Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Welcome to Out and About on the Think Tech live streaming network series. I'm your host, David Tasaka. This is my premiere show, and I'm delighted that you're joining us here today. <clears throat> we'll be exploring topics of all different kinds of things, organization, events, people, and it really is going to be a lot of fun for me. As a disclaimer, any views or opinions expressed by me are strictly my own and not connected with any organization. Joining me in the studio today is my good friend Abe Lee. Abe is a realtor, developer, real estate teacher who has been involved in real estate in Hawaii for over 40 years. Welcome to the show, Abe. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Tell us about your history in real estate, Abe, and how you got started. Uh, well, um, maybe I can go back a little more than that. Um, I was born in Korea and came when I was eight years old. And my father was a professor of accounting at the University of Hawaii. And my mother was a teacher in Korea. But when she came to Hawaii, she didn't speak English, so she had to work in a pantry at the hotels, chopping vegetables for a lady. So I went to University High School which is an affiliate of the University of Hawaii, and uh, graduated, and then went to University of Hawaii, and I got a degree in Asian studies. No offense to Asian studies people, but it's what I call a good-for-nothing degree <laughs> until you get your master's or PhD. So I knew I wanted to go to work, and so I thought, okay, what am I going to do after I graduate from college? Because that was expected of us. You know, the Asian mentality, professor, teacher, parents. So. I got a job selling uh, insurance. And uh, I thought, OK, if I sell insurance and I make families rich when the people die, the beneficiary, but, or the, the insured, but I thought, why don't I make some people rich while they're alive? And so hence, real estate. And so I had a chance to sell life insurance and then to sell real estate. Then my agent for the insurance company said, oh, Abe, uh, you can't do both. And I said, oh, I thought it was an independent agent. And so I said, well, then I'm going to turn in my resignation. So I went into real estate. So I, that was back in 1973, 74, when I got my real estate license. So it's been a few years. So where is your, what has been some of the things that have marked your career in real estate that stand out for you? Well, when I first started, I worked for a lady named Liz Baker, who was in a Pan Am building. And I'll never forget Liz, because she was an older lady. Now, I was 24, mind you, and Liz is in her 60s. So at that time, she was ancient, right? <laughs> <laughs> of course, now I'm 70, and people think I'm ancient. But um, so Liz uh, sold real estate for her husband, who was a developer. So the husband built the buildings, and he's, she, her company sold the units, projects. So I had a chance to do a project uh, called the Canal House at the end of Kapahulu by Alawai Canal. And so it was a, you know, a wonderful opportunity to sell uh, units to first-time home buyers. So that's how I got started in project sales. And I talked to anybody and everybody and said, hey, there's a project coming up at the end of Kapahulu. Are you interested? And I was fortunate in selling eight units in that project. And I was, I think, number one or two in sales at that time. So I got the bug about doing project sales. Then I worked for a fellow named Bob Allen, who did uh, Century Center, the tall building right at the corner of Kapilani and uh, Kalakaua. And he developed a project called Century, uh, Executive Center, but he also did Century Square, Century Center, and Executive Center. So I got involved in real estate sales and project sales at that point, too. So that was really a great opportunity for me to learn how to do project sales. Why do you think? It's so hard for people to understand real estate. And why does Hawaii have such a very low rate of home ownership? 
Well, okay, uh, first let's talk about the real estate portion. Uh, real estate is not rocket science, but it does take a lot of work, and you do have to have some knowledge of what you're doing. Otherwise, you could get caught in this problem of buying the wrong property at the wrong price, in the wrong location, or whatever. So I think most of it is because there's lack of knowledge and about the people being familiar with the processes that go on. So in my pre-licensing course that I teach, I teach my agents or students how to go through the 25 chapters of the textbook, and a lot of it has to do with law, with disclosure, how you hold title to property, about uh, you know uh, different uh, groups that are involved in that process. So in Hawaii, I believe we have a 58% homeownership occupant homeownership rate. On the mainland, it's 65%. So we're 7% lower. And part of the reason is obviously it's higher priced homes. Our median price is 770,000 right now for a house, and a condominium is close to 410,000 dollars. And by the way, median price is if you have 100 homes, the 50th home, halfway is a median price. So you got half of the homes over 770,000, and half of the homes that are below 770,000 for homes, and of course for condominiums would be 410 or 420,000 dollars. So. A young uh, couple just starting out in Hawaii would say, wow, I can't afford a $770,000 home or a $420,000 condo. So that's a problem. People think that they cannot afford to buy a home. But what they forget is half the homes are below $420,000 and half the homes are below $770,000. So there is a market for what I would call the more moderate priced units. Now, of course, they'd have to move out of town. You know, they can't be in town. In town, we're lucky if you can find a house for under a million dollars now. That's a rundown, small lot, small house, you know, what I call a termite palace. And so you have to move out of town to start, but it can be done. And so a lot of people think that they can't afford to buy a house in Hawaii, but they really can if they are taught the right process. I see that uh, you've written two books recently, and one of them is called How to Become a First-Time Home Buyer. What is the beginning step if a person wanted to buy a home in Hawaii? Okay, well, I'm glad you asked that. Let's say you're the first-time home buyer, David, and you're about 30 years younger, or 40 years younger, <clears throat> and you say, hey, Abe, I'd like to buy a house. I have a process that I go through with my first-time home buyers. And I tell them, let's meet at the office in front of a computer where we have access to the multiple listing service, which is that super duper computer that shows all the homes that are listed for condominiums and single family homes on the island of Oahu. So we'll sit down with the client and we'll say, hey, uh, let's look at what price range are you looking at? What neighborhood are you looking at? How many bedrooms? How many bath bathrooms? What lot size do you want? What can you afford? So that's the first thing we do. We sit down and talk. I also tell them that we need to meet face to face so that if we can, unless they're a mainland buyer or something, but if they're on Oahu, then we meet. And I say, the reason I want you to meet is because I want to see you face to face and see if you like me. Because if you don't like me, then you shouldn't work with me. And the other is, I want to meet you and see if I like you. Because if the personality doesn't match, then we shouldn't work with each other. And they should go find somebody else. So that's the first thing I do. I meet with them. And usually I like to have both husband and wife to, at the meeting. So once we meet, <clears throat> then it's their first time buying. I tell them to go to the Hawaii Home Ownership Center. And Hawaii Home Ownership Center is a nonprofit group. And they teach people how to prepare for home ownership. And because they're a nonprofit, they have no vested interest in the customers coming to get their nine hours of lessons. And they're part of a national network called NeighborWorks. And NeighborWorks is a nonprofit group funded by the federal government to help uh, nonprofits get started in each region. And there's over 200 regions in the United States. And Hawaii Home Ownership Center is one of the two that are authorized on Oahu or in Hawaii. So I send them there. And then they get to go through nine hours of classes. And they get to listen to re re realtors. And I volunteer to teach there. They get to listen to a guy named Dale Tomei, who is the education director. And then they get to meet loan officers and realtors, et cetera. And then once they finish the nine hours, they're assigned to a, a consultant or counselor. 
And that counselor will sit down with them and work out a budget and say, okay, what can you afford? And let's look at your credit report. Let's look at your credit score. How can we improve your credit score and improve your credit report, et cetera? So once they are done with the nine hours of classes, then they'll come back to me. <clears throat> then we'll meet at our office again, and now we have an idea what prices they're looking at, and they kind of have an idea what the credit score is like, and all this stuff. So then we have a chance then to really look into how should we go about buying this home of yours. And uh, I have a story that, I, I, in fact, I wrote it in the book. And I don't mention their name. Yeah, it's a young couple. And husband and wife, wife didn't work. Husband was a sole breadwinner. And they had three children. And so they come to me and says, uh, OK, we, we like you. We want to go through the HHOC, Hawaii Home Ownership Center. So they did. And they came back. And so I said, OK, how much can you afford? And he says, 130000 I go, I said, I said, did I hear you right? 130000 is all you can afford? And this was about five years ago, all right? So I said, OK, let's go on a computer and let's look up properties that are 130000 140000 I think there are maybe three or four units available, and they're all on the west side, right? Nanakuli, Baili, Wainai, et cetera. And I said, you know, I know you don't want to go to the west side, but that's the only choice, choice you got. Are you interested? And they said, yeah, I guess so. And it was a four bedroom, one and a half bath home. Now, mind you, it's a townhouse. And it was a, what they call a short sale, which means that the seller owed the bank more money than the property is going to sell for. So they're going to be short, I don't know, 10, 20, 30,000. So we have to get the seller's bank to approve the purchase. And the seller's bank said yes. So we got our contract accepted. But it took the bank, for the seller, a year and a half to finish the paperwork. And I'm going, you kidding me? We got this deal in escrow, and my clients were waiting for a year and a half to buy this property. In the meantime, they had their fourth child. <laughs> so <laughs> they had their fourth kid, and they finally moved in. And that was about five years ago. So I wrote, I wrote about them in the book, because they were a true example of patience, and they knew that they had to start somewhere. And then they knew they had to go out of town. And guess what? They called me up last year. Yeah, last year. And said, hey, we're ready to move up. <clears throat> Can you help us find a bigger place? And maybe not a bigger place, but a more expensive home closer to town. So in a five-year period, they have moved up from 130000 And I think they qualify for about 400000 420000 now. So it gives them a lot more breathing room and latitude. So that's one of my, what I call the stars in my book. Wow. <clears throat> that's quite a story, Abe. <laughs> and I can see you have the heart for helping first time homebuyers. OK, we're going to be coming up on a short break. I'm David Tasaka, and this is Out and About on the Think Tech Streaming Network series. We're talking with Abe Lee, who is a realtor, developer, real estate teacher who has been involved in real estate for a long time. How's that, Abe? <laughs> yep, over 40 years. We'll be back in a minute, so stay tuned for more of the story. Aloha. My name is Mark Shklov. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea. Law Across the Sea comes on every other Monday at 11 a.m. Please join us. I like to bring in guests that talk about all types of things that come across the sea to Hawaii. Not just law, love, people, ideas, history. Please join us for Law Across the Sea. Aloha. I said I could play, so I ain't chance to play at all. You know, that's my life. I love music. Yeah, I saw we do it. Hi, I'm Ethan Allen, host on Think Tech Hawaii of Pacific Partnerships in Education. Every other Tuesday afternoon at 3 p.m., I hope you'll join us as we explore the value, the accomplishments, and the challenges of education here in the Pacific Islands.
We're back. We're live. I'm David Tasaka with Out and About on the ThinkTech Streaming Network. Talking with Abe Lee, realtor, real estate developer, all around guru for the real estate people in Hawaii. Abe, tell us more about your journeys in helping people get their first home. Sure, I'd be glad to. Well, the reason I'm so passionate about this and the reason I volunteer as a um, committee member for the Hawaii uh, Home Ownership Center Development Committee is really, it's kind of intertwined. <clears throat> when I first um, got our first home, this was in Salt Lake City, Utah. I was in graduate school, and the money that I made from that project that I did at Canal House, that made me my down, gave me my down payment for a house in Salt Lake City, Utah. So we bought a duplex, and we lived downstairs in the basement, and we rented the upstairs, which was a bigger unit, to a PhD candidate, and I was a master's degree candidate. So our mortgage was, I think, $200, if you can believe it. We bought it for $36,000, right? So once I finished my grad school work, I came back to Hawaii, and we sold that house for 50000 in Utah, but when we came home, the cheapest home was 70000 So there's $20,000 differential, and there's no way we could afford it. So we rented, and we had three children by the time we had to move out of our unit that we're renting, and by the way, it was a basement in a house way in the back, and our neighbors were the flying bomber cockroaches. And so every night I'd have to go out and shoot spectricide and kill 10, 20, 50 roaches, because my wife didn't like roaches. So we were asked to leave, and uh, we we're, were basically going to be homeless if we didn't find a place. So my wife would call and say, hey, we're looking for a two-bedroom, three-bedroom in town, and you know, is there a place available? And almost all the owners and uh, property managers would say, how many children do you have? And we'd say, we have three. And they said, oh, you can't fit in a two-bedroom. You have too many kids. So really, a two-bedroom, we could squeeze, but they said no. <clears throat> so every day, this happened. And our deadline was getting shorter and shorter. So one day, uh, my wife called, and this guy says, oh, come down. We'll, take, we'll let you look at it. And three, five, kids, five people in the family, no problem. I go, whoa. So we go down there. It's on a corner of Awe Limo Street and Lusitana. So that's coming down from Roosevelt High School by Punchbowl, and you hit a T. And at that corner, there's an apartment building, a walk-up. And the manager happened to be uh, a priest who had fallen in love with a nun. And so they gave, their, uh, they gave up the vows. They stayed in the church, gave up their vows, and had five or six children together. And they're the property manager. So they said, Two, three kids, no problem. <clears throat> so they rented us the place. And I tell you, we, it was a blessing. Because if we did not get that apartment, we would have really been homeless. Because we had to move out soon. So I still remember that couple, how wonderful they were. And they actually gave us a chance to rent the unit. I told my wife at that time, the next time we move, we're going to be in a house. I will not subject ourselves to become tenants again. So there was a real motivation for me to you know, buy a house. Well, I helped develop a small piece of property on Luna Lilo Street between Picoy and Pensacola across the post office, right next to the freeway, freeway. And my client had six homes, five little cottages, about 600 square foot cottages, and their house was in the back, and their house was about 1,200 square feet. So they asked me if I would help them find a developer because they were in financial trouble. And so I looked for developers, and I, you know, I heard their uh, presentation, and I thought, gee, I think, think I can do better. So like a dummy, I said, no guts, no glory. So I said, hey, why don't I do the development for you? And I don't know what I'm doing, but I'd like to help you. So they did. They were very nice, and they trusted me, and they allowed me to develop their property. So we condominiumized the six homes. Now, these are single-family homes, okay? And as my consulting fee, they gave me $50,000, which was twice as much as what I made as an accountant at Deloitte Haskins and Sell back in 1979-80. So with that 50000 I said, can I buy one of the homes and the lot? The lot, mind you, was 1,400 square foot lot, the land area. And the cottage was 600 square feet, 60 years old. So we tore that house down, 
got a loan to build a house with the 50,000 down as equity. So we built the 1,400 square foot home, 700 square feet up and down, with a 1,400 square foot lot with one parking stall. That was our castle, our first home in Hawaii. But you know what? That saved us, because we finally had a home in Hawaii. And by then, I think we had four children, and we are able to call this our home. And then subsequently, we moved to Manoa once, and then we moved to Manoa twice. And where we are currently is where I'm going to die, because <laughs> it's our dream home, basically. And so we've been very, very blessed to have that opportunity to create affordable housing. So my goal has always been, as I develop real estate, to do affordable housing for first-time buyers. And uh, I would rather, no offense to others, but I'd rather sell to first-time home buyers to be able to help them start get started in Hawaii homeownership. And that's been my passion for the last 35, 40 years. Wow, that's great. <clears throat> Tell us about your new book, and books now, two <laughs> books, and okay. I've been a bit involved in it. Sure, well, uh, thanks to you, actually. <laughs> I, okay. I was able to publish the books with your help. But what happened was, um, we talked about how can we help people and get the word out. So I teach a class on first-time home ownership and what happens in buying a house, the mortgages and the finances and all this other stuff. So with your encouragement, I wrote this book, and it's how to become a first-time home buyer. And then you said, hey, we can put it on Amazon Kindle, and it's going to be really cheap, $2.99. So I thought, wow, that's great. And then I found out that you can have a print-on-demand as well as Amazon Kindle. So I asked you about that, and we did, and so hence we got the book. And so we're very fortunate. Uh, how to become a first-time home buyer is a one. I'm sorry, I'm biased on this, but it's a great book on how to get started in buying a home in Hawaii. And the book was written so they could be actually used nationally. So some of the things that I talk about in the book, like say the mortgage credit certificate, which is a wonderful uh, concept put out by the federal government. So if you buy a home and you get this MCC credit, then part of your interest is a tax credit off of your tax return. And the other balance is a tax deduction. So if you understand the difference between a tax credit and a tax deduction, there's a big difference. We talk about that. I also talk about the um, obstacles to being, becoming a homeowner. I also talk about what they call the FICO score. Fair Isaac, two uh, software program engineers, they figure out a way to figure, predict what's the chances of someone defaulting on a loan. So we have that uh, portion in there. So we got lots of stuff in there about the first steps in buying a home, how to deal with a loan officer, how to deal with a realtor, how to deal with banks, uh, mortgage credit certificate, government grants and loans. I also talk about VA and FHA financing, and also USDA financing. Now, people don't know too much about USDA financing, but it's the US Department of Agriculture, and they let you borrow money 100%, nothing down. If you're buy the home that you're buying is in an outlying area where the population is less than 20,000 people. So not too many people know that, that that type of financing is available. Of course, they know that VA loans are available because VA, anybody that's a veteran, can borrow money with nothing down and 100% financing. So when people say, I can't afford to buy a house, I tell them, you know, there's nothing down programs. There's also the FHA program that's 3.5% down. So you don't have to have 20% down. You can do it for way less than that. So I think you know the people need to be more educated, and hence I wrote the book based on the uh, continuing education course that I've been teaching for several years. And so far the response has been very positive from the students that have read the book. If you were to give a potential first-time home buyer mm -hmm. one piece of advice, right. how how can they get started in sure. the process? Uh, first, I think you have to have a desire. Because if you don't have a desire, then you're not going to do it. And my suggestion is to meet with a really good realtor that is concerned about your welfare and is willing to work with a first-time home buyer. Now, some realtors will not because they are going after the high end. But there are a lot of realtors that are very good, that are concerned about the first-time home buyer, and that's who you should hook up with. Uh, meet with them and see what they'll do for you. 
Second, I highly recommend that they go to Hawaii Home Ownership Center and get educated so that they can then go to the nine hour class. And by the way, the fee for that is $60, one time lifetime membership fee for you and your family and your extended family. So it's really inexpensive. So go through that program because they also have government grants and loans sometimes that are available only to Hawaii Home Ownership Center graduates or what we call the Neighbor Works affiliates. So there are programs out there that actually help. So that's the second. And then of course the third is come back and meet with the realtors and see where can I buy. Now I had a young couple, um, another couple. I met with them, they went to HHOC, came back and said, okay, we're ready to buy a house. So he said, we're looking for a three bedroom house in the Pro City IA area under $450,000, because that's what they qualify for. I said, okay. So, and I wouldn't tell them that they're dreaming. <laughs> so, because I knew what the market was like. So they came in the office, I put them on the uh, multiple listing service, and I said, okay, IA Pro City, 450,000 or lower. And guess what, one house showed up on a computer screen, all right? Just one. So the couple said, oh, maybe we gotta go out further, huh? And I said, well, I don't wanna tell you that, but I think you may have to. Eventually they ended up in Makakilo and they bought a place for $320,000, four bedroom. So it was within the budget, but it had to be about 10 miles out, further out than what they wanted but they at least had a start and were able to buy in. So we need to work with people from the very beginning and help them to get acclimated to the sticker shock of you know, prices being high and then be able to be realistic about what they can afford. Good. So the, if they, someone wanted to find out more information, mm -hmm. uh, can they, contact you and uh, meet with you like how that couple did to oh, get in? Yes, I'd be glad to. Uh, like I say, my passion is to help first time home buyers. So they can call me anytime they want on my phone. Uh, it's 216-4999, 216-4999. Or if they go to ableyseminars.com, which is my school, at the bottom it will say contact us and my email and my phone number should be there. At least my email is there. So either email me or call me. And by the way, I have wonderful agents in my company that most of them have gone through Hawaii Home Ownership Center. But one of my goals is to have every one of my agents go through HHOC as a student, as an agent, so that they're familiar with the program. And we have wonderful agents that have gone through the program and are staunch supporters of the First Time Home Ownership Program. Okay, <clears throat> brings us to the end of my first program with my special guest, Abe Lee. See this program and all its new adventures every third Monday on Out and About on the Think Tech Network. Aloha, everyone. Come back and see us again. More and more adventures lie ahead. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you soon. Aloha.